Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Patricia Jeffers and today I will be reviewing with you when to begin the process of conducting functional behavior assessments and or a functional analysis while working with your clients. Quickly to review, so through this presentation we will be discussing what a functional behavior assessment is, uh, what functional analysis is, and then I will also be discussing the FBA process that we use at my company and share with you some uh, documentation that we use during that process as well. So again, my name is Patricia Jeffers. I am currently a graduate student in my last semester at Ball State University. I will be graduating with my master's in applied behavioral analysis with the hopes of sitting for my BCBA exam at the beginning of next year. I have worked in the field of special education for over 10 years now within various settings, and I recently made a career change at the beginning of the year, and I am working as a registered behavior technician for CESA Educational Services. Within my role, I push into the home, community, and school setting to help support my clients' behavioral, academic, and independent living skills growth through the application of ABA processes. Prior to changing positions, most of my experience had been working in private schools as a behavior interventionist with individuals diagnosed with social, emotional, and behavioral disorders. I made a decision to change jobs because I wanted to gain more experience working with individuals diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder in various settings and not just within the school setting. My experience with conducting any kind of assessments has been very limited up until recently. Since starting at CESA, I have worked alongside my BCBA supervisors to conduct functional behavioral assessments for new clients and assess social language and functional living skills through the utilization of VB maps and AFOLS assessments. So to begin, Functional Behavioral Assessments is a system of data collection of the environmental events that both occur prior and after a problem behavior in the effort to understand why the individual engages in the problem behavior. The Individuals with Disabilities Act requires professionals to assess students who display challenging behaviors that interfere with their educational placement and receive an FBA to determine the best function-based interventions to implement in order to reduce problem behavior and increase academic growth. Parents can also request services in which a BCBA would conduct an FBA to determine the function of problem behaviors within the home and or community setting. Problem behaviors are continuous and may impede social relations, communication, and learning of individuals who engages in them. If the individual engages in problem behaviors that are severe, they may cause harm to themselves, family members, and or others within the community. Through the process of conducting an FBA, BCBAs can identify function-based behavioral treatment strategies to help reduce problem behavior. Studies have shown that function-based behavioral strategies produce greater reduction in problem behaviors than non-function-based treatment. B.F. Skinner first introduced the concept of the term three-term contingency in the 1950s. The three-term contingency describes the relationship between a behavior, its consequence, and the environmental context in which it all occurred. This three-term contingency is also referred to as the ABC consequences of behavior. During the FBA process, BCBAs look at the ABCs of problem behavior to determine the maintaining contingencies in which behavior continues to occur. The A is for antecedent, and this refers to the events, actions, or circumstances that occur prior to the problem, problem behavior. B is for behavior, and these are actions in which the individual engages in. And C is for consequences, and this refers to what happens after the behavior. Consequences can be reinforcing, which increases the likelihood of the behavior occurring in the future, and or punishing, which decreases the likelihood of the behavior occurring in the future. Remember, the function of behavior is the why. Why does the individual engage in the problem behavior? Is it in order to gain access or escape slash avoid events, actions, or circumstances? Positively reinforcing functions of consequences consists of attention, 
access to preferred items or activities, and automatic reinforcement, while negatively reinforcing functions of consequences consists of escape and or avoidance of some adverse event present within the environment. There are a variety of behavior rating scales that behavior analytic practitioners can choose to help assess possible functions of behaviors. Some of these assessments include motivating, motivation assessment scale, motivation analysis rating scale, problem behavior questionnaire, functional analysis screening tool, and questions about behavioral function. Within the process of an FBA, there are three principal approaches that can be used conjointly or separately to collect all necessary information regarding an individual's problem behavior. These approaches are indirect assessments, direct assessments, and functional analysis. Indirect assessments consist of gathering information from those who are in close contact with the individual being evaluated. These methods help identify antecedent and or consequences associated with the problem behavior. When conducting an indirect assessment, the BCBA does not need to be face-to-face -face with the interviewee. Information can be obtained through record reviews, rating scales, checklists, and or questionnaires. Direct assessments consist of gathering information through direct observation and measurement of the target behavior within the individual's natural environment. BCBAs can collect and analyze this information through a scatterplot analysis and or ABC analysis. Scatterplot analysis allows for a quick review of behavioral patterns and the time period of day in which they may or may not occur. ABC analysis is a descriptive narrative account of environmental events that occur before, during, and after the occurrence of problem behavior. Functional analysis involves the manipulation of the natural environment, direct observation, and measurement of severe problem behaviors. FAs are used when it is difficult to identify the function of severe problem behavior. The target behavior is reinforced for a brief period of time to allow for the demonstration of which function the behavior is most sensitive to. It is important to note that there is no standard process for a functional analysis. It is an individualized to the specific person being evaluated. And through this process, BCBAs manipulate reinforcers, motivating operations, and discriminative stimuli through four identified conditions. These conditions are comprised of one control and three test conditions. Cooper et al. identify the three test conditions as contingent attention, contingent escape, and contingent tangible. Each condition is presented one at a time in alternating sequence. Before diving into the condition phases, it is important to note that behavior analytic practitioners must consider the ethical issues surrounding the client's safety while conducting functional analysis. Since target behaviors are evoked during an FA, it is essential to implement precautionary measures to ensure the safety of all who are involved especially when working with kiddos who engage in severe problem behavior like self-injury, physical aggression, and pica. FA should be only conducted by trained professionals or those under the supervision of trained professionals. During the control condition, the problem behavior is expected to be low due to the individual having free access to preferred items or activities, provided social attention, and no demands being placed upon the person. When be problem behaviors do occur, they are ignored or neutrally redirected. The first test condition is contingent attention. During this phase, the individual is not provided with attention initially, but once they do engage in problem behaviors, then the analyst provides attention in the form of mild reprimands and or soothing statements. If an individual engages in problem behavior during this condition and stops when provided attention, then it is hypothesized that problem behavior is maintained by socially positive reinforcement. The second test condition is contingent escape. During this phase, the individuals provide it with continuous demands to complete a task, but once they do engage in problem behavior, the analyst provides a break and removes the task and all material while stopping all prompts to complete the task. 
If an individual engages in problem behavior during this condition and it stops when the demand is removed, then it is hypothesized that the problem behavior is maintained by negative reinforcement. The third task condition is contingent tangible. During this phase, the individual is initially provided with unlimited access to preferred activities and or tangibles. It is then removed and moderately preferred or neutral tangibles are still pre present as well as adult attention. But once the individual does start to engage in problem behaviors, then the analyst returns the preferred activity and or tangible to the individual. The individual, if the individual engages in problem behavior during this condition, and then it stops when provided access to preferred activities and or tangibles, then it is hypothesized that the problem behavior is reinforced by positive reinforcement of tangibles. There is one last condition that is identified as the alone condition. During this condition, analysts provide low levels of environmental stimuli, but once the individual does engage in problem behaviors, the analyst either ignore the behavior or provides neutral redirection. If the individual engages in problem behaviors during this condition and it stops when ignored or neutrally redirected, then it is hypothesized that the problem behavior is maintained by automatic reinforcement. Quickly, um, I would like to review some of the advantages and disadvantages of functional analysis or conducting a functional analysis. An advantage of conducting functional analysis is that it yields clear demonstration of the variable or var variables that influence the occurrence of problem behavior. And the disadvantages are that the assessment process may temporarily, temporarily strengthen or increase problem behavior or result in the behavior acquiring new functions. There is still little known about the acceptability of functional analysis, and some behaviors may not be amiable to functional analysis due to the setting and or other factors within the environment. And conducting um, functional analysis are, sorry, functional analysis are conducted within contrived settings and may not detect the variables that account for the occurrence of problem behaviors within an individual's natural setting. So the company I work for only conducts functional behavior assessments. We do not have a clinic location where we can conduct FAs in a safe environment. The process of conducting an FBA is initiated by the company receiving a client referral. Once that referral is reviewed and insurance approved services, the first step is to conduct an indirect assessment via record reviews and or parent and teacher interviews. During the parent, during the parent and teacher interviews, the BCBA asks various questions regarding the client's strengths and weaknesses, preferred activities, tangibles, and foods, uh, what concerns the parent or teacher have regarding the client's behavior, what the behavior looks like, and when the behavior problem behaviors occur and if there are any motivating operations and or specific antecedent events that may evoke the problem behavior. After the indirect assessment phase, direct observations are scheduled for the BCBA to go out and observe the client within their natural environment, whether it is the home, community, or school setting. ABC data is collected and additional assess assessments such as VBMAP, AFOLS, or ABLES are conducted depending on the client's age and or concerns. Step three is the process of analyzing all data that has been collected to determine the function of the client's problem behavior. Our company uses a web-based site called Motivity to graph our data. Once analysis is completed, then the BCBA moves into developing goals and identifying function-based interventions for the client's behavior reduction plan. And they also work on developing goals for their client skill acquisition plans. The BCBA will review all plans with, the cl with clients and stakeholders prior to implementation of treatment. After the plans are approved, the BCBA meets with an assigned behavioral health technician and your registered behavior technician to discuss and train them on the client's individualized plans to then be implemented within the home, school, or community setting. Overall, this process of conducting an FBA takes about two to three weeks, depending on the BCABA and client schedule. So the next couple of slides are just some examples of the documentation that we use during our FBA process. This first one is our parent and teacher questionnaire. Next is um, 
we use the FAST assessment within our company as well. And this just helps to further break down the and help to identify the function and problem behavior. We also use the VB map assessment, AFOLS, and ABLES R. Next, these are just some examples of our graphing system and how it looks, the different skills that we use. Not only do we focus on behavior reduction, but we also focus in on skill acquisitions, um, things like that. Thank you for joining my presentation today. I hope you are able to better understand the difference between functional behavior assessments and functional analysis. I provided a link to my company's website if you are interested in checking out more information on what our company is about and the types of interventions that we implement with our clients. And again, thank you for um, sitting through this presentation.